Hi, this is Barabelle from Barabelle Productions and in this video I thought I'd share with you how I organize the pattern designs that I create for a pattern collection into an easily manageable Adobe Illustrator document. So first let's take a look at one pattern collection document that I have created and this is for my pattern collection that I call Beautiful Century. And I have found that uh, organizing my designs like this into just one document uh, really helps me in so many ways. First of all, it helps me to keep track on what designs I have created so far for the collection and also lets me easily see what type of patterns I have. Like how many focal point prints do I have or coordinating patterns and how many of them that I have created so far are large scale, medium or, or small scale and so on. So it gives me an overview of the whole collection and uh, the variety that I have co accomplished so far. Another upside with using a document like this is that after I have finished the designs, I keep everything in one single place instead of different documents and folders for every pattern that I have created. Sometimes I have like two or three different documents, working documents for a pattern. And if I would save all of them, it would just be unnecessary storage that would be occupied on my computer. So space is a third upside with this. After I have finished a design and saved it to this document, I erase all the other working documents that I have used when created that pattern. Uh, this really helps me keep it all clean and organized. So using uh, this method has also helped me keep down the megabytes a bit. A warning though with using this type of collection document is that this file this document itself is going to be really large and heavy depending on what type of patterns of course that you make and i tend to create really heavy and large pattern repeats because uh, i usually uh, draw mo the motifs scan them and image trace that uh, that in general creates large documents but so far it's been working like a charm. Illustrator might flash me a message now and then that this document is very large, but that's just been some empty threats so far. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said that because now it's gonna crash my computer the next time I open it probably. So what I have included in my um, pattern collection document is this header. And here I save uh, a logo that I have created for the collection with the title or the name of the pattern collection. And then usually I write a bit of a, um, a story or some where I got the inspiration for my collection. And so that copy text I can save here. So since I'm Swedish, I sometimes make an, a Swedish version and an English version. And then I have two colorways as I mentioned before. So and then I just enter the names of the colorways that I have. So this one is called printed cotton and this one is called brocade silk. My aim is to have 12 finished patterns for every collection. As you can see here, three rows with four patterns in each row. But usually I make much more patterns than that. And some of the patterns are really ugly and not good at all. And then then I just, I either I just save them for in some kind of a scrap archive or something and see if I can reuse some of the motifs in another pattern perhaps. Or some patterns that don't really measure up, but still I like, I save in this sort of extra row down here. So here are some patterns that I made for this uh, collection, but really didn't make the cut. So now I'm gonna uh, show you how I would make it. And as you can see, it's pretty simple. It's not a, a complex document at all, but just to inspire you a little bit. So I create a new document. And it doesn't really matter what size or format you use. And I'll just title it collection or something. This is just to demonstrate for you. And then I just start building this document or this template with, um, with a bunch of squares or, or rectangles. So some kind of header, 
which I will just color in a gray color or something. And then I make those pattern boxes. And I want four in one row. And then I just scale them to fit under my header. I want to make them black because that makes it sort of a, an empty space that needs to be filled. And I want three rows of these for my 12 pattern collection. And I keep a little bit of a space in between because now I'm going to have a text box for the pattern names. So just for uh, as a placeholder, I'll name it something and I'll just change the font to something I like and take it up in size a bit and I think I'm gonna center it. Okay, so that's a bit of a text box and now I want to duplicate it for the rest of the pattern boxes. And um, as I showed you with this one, I have these extra boxes at the bottom in case I have some extra patterns that don't make the cut. So I'm just gonna allow myself to have that as well and just keep them a little bit below like this. All right, so here's a, a good start. And if I want to have two colorways, I just duplicate this. And I want to have them a bit separated. I can keep those two headers like that, but I want to have one that spans over the whole collection like this. So I think I'm just gonna size it down a little bit. There. And I mean, of course I can keep it like this, but it doesn't look neat for to me with a, um, an artboard like that. So I'm gonna create a new artboard that is uh, adapted for my collection. So I'll just send it to the back and then I'll convert it into an artboard. And then I'll go to my artboards panel and I'll just throw away the first one. Nice and neat. So now when I have all my boxes ready to be filled, I can start doing that to import all my pattern designs for a, a specific pattern collection. But first, I think I want to bring in the logo that I have created to sort of set the atmosphere. So here I have opened up a document where I created a logo for this pattern collection where the seed meets shore, I think it's gonna be called. So I'll just copy that and paste it in here and scale it down to fit. See if I can align it in the middle somewhere, something like that. All right, so now I think this gray background is not really what I want to have here. So another thing that I save into this collection document is the color palette that I have used for the patterns that I've created. So I go to my swatch menu, open swatch library and the user defined and the one that I call see me shore. And then I can um, pick the color groups that I want to save. And I'm probably gonna wanna save all of them just in case this is not taking up too much storage. At least this one, Probably not the, and this one, and not the, well, okay, the brown, but not the, the bright green, because I don't think I ever used that for the collection. So now I have the color groups in my swatches panel. So now I can pick a background color for my header. And maybe it should be, let's see, I'll just use this one, a bit cream color. Now I'm ready to start importing the pattern designs that I have created for this collection. And it's, it's a work in progress collection. Um, so let's see where I can find it. Here I have a bunch of pattern designs that I've created and I'll open up this one, one that I call surf lines. So this is what I mean. In this document, I have all kinds of data saved. Um, I have this repeat box, which is the original repeat box that I created to build my pattern. It includes all kinds of 
motifs, a background box, and texture. So it takes, it's a, quite a lot of information saved just by that. And then I have uh, experimented with some colorways. I recolored the, the pattern repeat that I created and tried out some different versions. Um, also not necessary to keep, I think, because I can recolor, I can just save like two of them and then if I want to recolor it, I can do that in just a moment with a recolor tool. And just to um, emphasize this that it takes a lot of storage is that all of this takes <laughs> a lot of storage and every colorway and swatch that I have created is also saved here in the swatches panel so that's a lot of information to save so I'm just gonna pick two colorways that I like for my pattern like these ones and copy them go back to my collection document and paste okay and now they are saved to my swatches panel automatically. So I can now pick this one and actually I wanted this one over there and then I'll take the other one like that and just erase these two. So I haven't created the boxes for the colorways I just realized. So let's just do that. So one over here perhaps and I guess it should be white. And then one over here. In case I want to have two colorways and name them something specifically. And then I'll just bring in a text box too. And now I can start importing the other pattern designs into this. Okay, so here I have now imported the pattern designs that I've created so far for this collection. And now it's easy for me to see that, all right, I need to have six more patterns to fill these boxes right here. And perhaps on the way I'll save some of the alternative pattern designs that I'll create that are runner-ups for the collection. All that remains now is to come up with a name for the colorways and also start typing in the names for the different patterns. And so this one is called Surf Lines. And now that I have all my patterns um, that I've created so far, I can go ahead and erase those working documents. I don't need to save them anymore. All right, so that was all for this tutorial and I hope this inspired you in some ways and to make your own pattern collection documents and just organize your files and documents in a neat and nice way. So until the next one, bye.